Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the man accused in the death of a mother of two from Victoria is expected in court tomorrow. It's the most talked about constitutional amendment on the ballot for November 7th. Property tax relief is the focus of Proposition 4. And Texas sues the Biden administration over the removal of wire on the border. We had additional shower activity around the area today. That was good. We're going to get a little bit more tomorrow. It looks like the peak of this rain will be on Thursday. And then the weekend, well, it's going to get interesting early next week. I'll have that forecast coming up. And if the West Lady Warriors volleyball team wins, well, they're in. I'll have that in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia is on assignment. The man accused in the death of a mother of two from Victoria is expected in court tomorrow. Amanda Johnson was found dead in a burned out SUV in Matagorda County on April 18, 2021. She was 38 years old. 30 year old Fernando Acosta Jr. is charged in the crime. A grand jury indicted Acosta on charges of tampering with evidence, abuse of corpse and murder. Acosta's trial is set for November 13th. 22-year-old Vincent Rene Lacone has been arrested by Quero Police and is facing four charges. Lacone is charged with burglary of habitation, a violation of the terms of his probation from the original charge in Victoria County in 2021. Lacone faces three other charges. He is in the DeWitt County Jail in lieu of $59,000 bond. The EPA is hosting a public meeting in Port Lavaca today. 25 News Now anchor Karina Garcia has more on the details of the meeting and speaks with an environmental activist who was there. That's right, Don. I am here in Port Lavaca with Diane Wilson. You are an environmental activist here in the area and a local fisherman. That's right. So what are the specific environmental concerns regarding the Red Mud Lake? Well, uh, my concerns about the Red Mud Lakes is that according to Alcoa's own documents, they were putting mercury-laden waste into the Red Mud Lake since 1971 to probably 1979. And I know Alcoa had to sue their insurance companies uh, because the insurance companies refused to pay for the cleanup. And as part of those documents and as part of that lawsuit, the transcripts uh, say that as much as 100 thousand pounds of mercury was put into the red mud lakes mm -hmm. and I doubt anybody in this whole county knows that mercury is in those red mud lakes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I have the documents myself and I intend to ask the EPA about it and I know there have been breaches of the red mud lakes and they have went into Cox's Creek. So I do know one of the things that the EPA and Alcoa is going to do is do testing for mercury in Cox's Creek, mm -hmm. which I don't believe they've ever did before. So I know that Alcoa representatives as well as environmental protection agency representatives will be at this meeting today. What do you hope to achieve from this today? Uh, one, I hope that they will take uh, the concern of mercury being the Red Mud Lakes seriously and what that might mean to uh, the any kind of marine species that is in Cox's Creek. And in the past, there have been subsistent fishermen in Cox's Creek catching fish and so you know and uh, mercury uh, that's the thing about the closure in Lavaca Bay over there is that there are high levels of mercury in the fish and in the crabs and uh, and it there's a possibility there might be that type of problem in Cox's Creek and if there is a cleanup of mercury in the bay then should there be a cleanup of mercury in the red mud lakes. All right. Well, Diane, thank you so much for your time and your efforts. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Don, back to you.
Karina, thank you so much. Victoria ISD board member Margaret Pruitt was elected to serve a one-year term on the Texas Association of School Boards Board of Directors for Region 3. Voters elected Pruitt to the VISD board in 2016. She serves as board secretary. And now let's take a first look at your forecast. Here's First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Mac, we just saw Karina out there in Port Lavaca. It looked really windy. Yeah, the wind is all part of this big storm that's uh, coming from the Pacific and um, now moving into North Texas. We did have uh, clouds and showers and then daylight sunshine and a little bit of everything, but we've got a better chance of getting rain in the next couple of days. 82 is our current temperature. We only managed to get up to 85 today because of the cloud cover. And the good news, we got 78 hundredths of an inch of rain out at the airport. That brings our month to 341 and our annual to 28.99. Coming up, we'll be talking about the additional showers that are likely, especially on Thursday. All that coming up in a moment. Mac, thank you. The United Auto Workers Union has taken its most serious shot yet at General Motors in its five-week-old strike. 5,000 members walked off the job at the Arlington Assembly, the auto giant's largest plant. It builds GM's very profitable full-size SUVs, the Chevy Tahoe and Suburban GMC Yukon, and the Cadillac Escalade. The targeted strike came just hours after the company reported third-quarter earnings, which grew last quarter, despite the strike. With Arlington now on strike, those weekly losses are likely to jump more than 50 percent. In this Texas constitutional amendment election, Proposition 4 is the most talked about this year. It would authorize the legislature to provide property tax relief measures. Proposition 4 offers several property tax related changes. It would increase the resident's homestead exemption for school taxes from $40,000 to $100,000. It would also adjust the exemption for the elderly and disabled. Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. Here's your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote. Here's the question. How do you plan to vote for Proposition 4? For it or against it? Let's look at the numbers. 79% of the voters say they are going to vote for Proposition 4, 21% against. We thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to CrossroadsToday.com and I'll have an update on 25 News Now at 10. Texans are voting on 14 constitutional amendments. Early voting runs through next Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and next Thursday and Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can vote at the Dr. Patty Dodson Public Health Center, 2805 North Navarro, Classroom A. Most counties in the crossroads have increased their number of registered voters since the last state congressional amendment election two years ago. KXAN reports Victoria County has had the most registered voters in that time with 435, followed by Lavaca County at 385. The Texas Sec Secretary of State's numbers show DeWitt County has one of the largest decreases in the state in registered voters, down almost 802 years. That's a drop of 6.5 percent. Attorney General Ken Paxton is suing the Biden administration over the destruction of the Texas border barrier. Paxton is suing over the federal government cutting and destroying Texas concertina wire that was positioned to secure the state's border with Mexico. Paxton says by cutting Texas concertina wire, the federal government has not only illegally destroyed property owned by the state of Texas, it has also disrupted the state's border deterrence efforts. Republican Congressman Pete Sessions from Waco dropped out of the race Tuesday for House Speaker after getting the fewest votes in a GOP conference meeting. The Texas Tribune reports Sessions had run on his experience leading the National Republican Congressional Committee and the House Rules Committee. House Majority Whip Tom Emmer wound up with the most votes after five rounds of voting, making him the Speaker nominee, but then Emmer withdrew from the race after Donald Trump objected to his nomination. Massachusetts State Police have located a car belonging to a 33-year-old man. He is a suspect in the death of his wife, who reportedly wanted to leave him and move to Texas.
This is what investigators have been looking for. The white BMW belonging to Aaron Pennington. The 33 year old is wanted in connection with the death of his wife on Sunday. Court documents obtained by WBZ say the couple's four children notified a neighbor they couldn't find their father and their mother was crying. Police say when they got to the home on Cherry Street, 30 year old Brianne Pennington was lying dead in her bed. She had been shot in the face. Those records also reveal Brianne was considering moving to Texas with the children and that Aaron Pennington had been dealing with mental health issues and contemplating suicide. By Monday afternoon, law enforcement descending on the entrance of Camp Collier and Kelton Street. Police using canines and helicopters to survey this area. I'm scared. My daughter's home. Melissa Zirkel lives just down the street from where the car was found. Her daughter is home alone and was told by police this afternoon to get in the house. This community remains on edge. It's kind of petrifying, to be honest with you. Like I said, it's fairly quiet around here. People are friendly. We, you hardly ever see cops on this road. Hundreds of watermelons spilled onto a Houston area expressway just before Tuesday morning's commute. It happened on I-69 in the appropriately named community of Sugarland. An 18-wheeler carrying the fruit apparently crashed into a sign. Officials have not reported any injuries from the accident, but it created a sticky situation, of course, for drivers. Crews had to close multiple lanes while they cleaned up the crushed fruit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. ERCOT officials say they are getting the Texas power grid ready for winter. Also ahead, federal prosecutors have expanded investigations into Austin-based Tesla. Hi. I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Crime Stoppers is seeking information about burglaries of a motor vehicle and credit card abuse. On October 13, 2023, a white male with a dark beard and a mustache wearing a blue Willie Nelson's t-shirt, gray pants, dark rimmed glasses, and a baseball cap burglarized two vehicles. One vehicle was located at the 7100 block of North Navarro the other was located at the 9,000 block of North Navarro. The suspect then attempted to use a credit card obtained during one of the burglaries with the motor vehicle. The suspect was driving a dark colored 2010 to 2012 Chevy Traverse. If you have any information about these burglaries of a motor vehicle or the credit card abuse, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device or by visiting our website at www.crimestoppersvictoria.com. All tips are anonymous, and if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you can earn a cash reward. With the Victoria Police Department, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs.
ERCOT is getting ready to be prepared for winter power grid needs and to regain the public's trust. ERCOT CEO and President Pablo Vegas told KRIS they are using every available tool to be reliable through this next winter and through the next summer after that. Vegas said this summer was the second hottest in recorded Texas history and that the combination of record heat and increasing demand were the reasons the grid was being pushed. Over 30 states are suing Meta, the parent of Instagram. Meta is accused of addicting and harming young people. A federal lawsuit was filed in California Tuesday. The states say Meta's products have harmed young users' mental health with its addictive features such as infinite news feeds and frequent notifications, and that Instagram has contributed to a mental health crisis in the United States. Texas was one of eight states to sue Meta over the same claims in June of last year. Federal prosecutors have expanded investigations into Austin-based Tesla beyond the electric vehicle maker's partially automated driving systems, and they have issued subpoenas for information instead of simply requesting it. KXAS reports the filing indicates prosecutors may be investigating Tesla CEO Elon Musk and whether the company has been candid in describing the features of its vehicles. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Most of the heavy air activity uh, occurring right now up in the Dallas area, but we did have some nice showers roll through here. There's more rain expected tomorrow and Thursday will be the peak of this. And then uh, it gets very cold next, well, okay, much colder next week. And so we'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. Good afternoon, everybody. We did get additional shower activity around the area this morning. Uh, there you see uh, the city, uh, most of it sort of moving on either side. But uh, the good news is that everybody got a little bit of something. And I always say if we could get just a half inch of rain every day for about a week, we'd be in great shape. But, uh, you know, it's so hard uh, <laughs> to get anything consistent. At this hour of the evening, much of the rain has ended for us, but it's not uh, ended up in Dallas all the way from Waco to Dallas are getting the heavier activity and out here in far west Texas you can see how the storms are beginning to fire. These are going to be the big ones. This is uh, you know sort of a light tropical rain that's going to be severe thunderstorms out there in far west Texas. All these streaks that you see here are the showers that move northbound uh, during the day in the uh, in the light green you have basically uh, 
no, no, in the dark green, you have basically half an inch. Uh, uh, above uh, that, in the green, that's where you have more than half an inch. And if you got blue, well, you got up to two inches of rain. So uh, most of that was, as you can see, up north, all the way up uh, along I-35, all the way up there, and even out here in the San Angelo area. Anybody that gets rain in Texas, it's good, okay? I mean, West Texas needs it. The rivers, the headwaters are up here for most of them, all move this way. I mean, the Colorado River starts over here and moves all the way down here. So uh, that it fell in our watershed, that's good stuff, and we're going to be enjoying this for a while. Now, temperatures tonight only getting down into the mid-70s for us, a few 60s out in West Texas. For us, we're looking at about 86 for tomorrow. And, of course, it's rather warm and rather humid because this is all Pacific air from uh, the tropics that rolled up and gave us uh, this rainfall. And then we watch and wait to see what happens because it's getting very interesting in the weather because the big storms are beginning to roll out of the Pacific Northwest. As I mentioned out here in this green is where they have a marginal chance of some severe weather and that would be tomorrow. And then by Thursday, it all sort of pulls northeast away from our area. So what's happening on the big picture? Well, the big picture is like this. We have another powerful hurricane. This one's at a three already, could be a four. And you can see it's right close to land. So it's going to move onshore to Acapulco probably tomorrow and then fall apart dramatically along the mountain edge. Now you can say, well, that's good. That's actually bad because those mountains are going to get probably 10 to 15 inches of rain. Massive mudslides are expected right along the uh, west coast. And, you know, in the uh, more humble villages, this is going to be a huge problem. So hopefully they've got uh, re people ready uh, for a re uh, search and rescue out there because that's going to be a very, very wet uh, day tomorrow. Now for us, high pressure on the east coast, giving us the wind bringing it up here and that's why it's so windy out there. We had probably 30 mile an hour wind gusts this afternoon. Then we have on the other side this deep low. This is the one sending us all that moisture. You can see it moving northbound now. That's Wednesday. Thursday is the chance when we get some severe weather rolling through the area as that thing moves through. And then we watch and wait for that frontal system. Yes, there's a frontal system coming. It's not tomorrow. 85 in Port Lavaca, 87 in Cuero. The front is not forecast to come in through Monday. And Monday's high temperature 75. And on Halloween, Barely getting up to 70 degrees, that may be windy and in the 60s for most of the day. So much cooler expected for Halloween. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody to have we have a QR code. Take a picture of that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Don. Mag, thank you. Now here's sports director Gino Perez and silver lining for the fourth time in five seasons. Gino, we have a Texas team in the World Series. Yeah, whichever side you're on, doesn't matter. Texas is in the World Series, and we hear from the manager and the ALCS MVP on making it back to the World Series after the break.
At a crossroads, the Victoria West Warriors volleyball team with a big opportunity ahead of them tonight at home. If they get the win, they can clinch a playoff spot and they get Corpus Christi King and that game started at 6 o'clock. This game is being called a crossover match. These two haven't met all year. The last time they met was back in 2021 and 2022 season. This year, the West Warriors are 6-2 in district play and winners of the last two matchups. If they can get a third consecutive victory, then the Lady Warriors will celebrate a postseason berth. The Quero volleyball team will make the playoffs as well if they get a win tonight too. Tonight in Lavernia, the Lady Gobblers looking for a district title. These two met back on September 29th where Quero walked away with the win, taking the match three sets to two. Now they have to hit the road and hope for a repeat performance to return home as district champions. The Texas Rangers get to its first World Series appearance in 12 years. Here's what the final out was if you missed it last night. The Rangers had to fight and win games five or excuse me, six and seven to make a trip back to the World Series. The Rangers started off hot last night and kept the pedal to the metal to win the pennant. Rangers outfielder Adolis Garcia was named the American League Championship Series MVP. He finished with 15 RBIs, which is a new record for any postseason series. He also went four for four with two home runs in the final game. Here's what he and the first year coach had to say about the victory. You can't really deny that, that Octo October has that type of emotion, it has that type of um, situation around it. I just, for myself, I just try to keep myself focused on the task at hand, try to perform, try to control the things that I can, and have the success that we can have. Game one of the World Series will be Friday at 7.03 against either the Phillies or the Diamondbacks. Friday night at 7.03, Arizona and Philadelphia will play game seven tonight at 7.03. And Bruce Bochy, he just said basically that he was sitting at home watching all these games happen, but now he's back in the action. And this one should be a good one tonight at 7.03. The NBA season starts tonight and there are some big names highlighting the season debut. LeBron James and the Lakers are heading to the Mile High City to face off against the reigning NBA champion, the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic. The Lakers are coming off a disappointing season in the Western Conference Finals after getting swept by the Nuggets. The Nuggets swept them in four games, but three of the games being decided by six points or less. The Joker went, to, went on to the finals and won the whole thing and its first NBA title in Denver history. Tip off tonight at 6.30. Also playing tonight are the Golden State Warriors against the Phoenix Suns. This game is going to be filled with some star powers as well as the Warriors and Steph Curry take on the Suns and Kevin Durant. Last season, the Warriors lost to the Lakers and the Suns lost in the conference semifinals to the Nuggets. Tip off is at 9 o'clock. Ledger Sports, Don, back to you. Now, Gino, how do you cope with a, a really slow time in sports? you got the World Series going on, the NBA starting tonight, and college football, and, and the NFL going on. Yeah, you see, I just <laughs> practice doing this because I'm watching all screens at once. So. <laughs> Good idea. Watch that neck. All right, Gino, thank you. We're back in a moment. A new study shows the benefits of bird watching on your mental health.
Finally tonight, get your binoculars and head outdoors. The activity of bird watching may improve your mental health, and there's research to support it. A University of Chicago study shows that when people interact with more natural environments, they can improve their memory and attention by about 20%. The study shows that even in the cold, Getting out into nature still helps your memory and mood. It would help your memory really because after you're out there in the cold for a while, you remember how nice it is when you're inside and it's warm. <laughs> you know? Was that a bluebird or a blackbird? I, I, don't, yeah. I don't remember. Or a grackle. Well, my favorite are the hummingbirds. They're oh, so cool with how fast they move. The and, oh, I love yes. hummingbirds. And they go, bzz, bzz, yep. bzz, bzz. It's just, it's, they're cool if you can get it. You Don't can even, blink and you'll miss them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, yes. I've got it where I've got the things hanging, where they come and eat, and I can sit there and don't move. It's kind of neat. Excellent. Anyway, folks, uh, we do have more chances for showers uh, on Wednesday, peaking on Thursday, then decreasing on Friday. At this time, it looks like the weekend is okay, uh, but we've got that cold front coming in on Monday. All right. Thank you, Mac, and thanks for joining us. Hey, we'll see you tonight for 25 News Now at 10. Have a good one, everybody.